Uh, David Davis, you're very well known in the UK, of course, but you've become known internationally, I think, with the 42-day stand. Um, would you like to say why you chose that moment to stand up uh, uh, and, and make your speech, out, I think, outside Parliament on the day? What prompted your decision at that moment? At, at that time, I was Shadow Home Secretary, and for four or five years, I had been struggling with the issues of liberty, the erosion of liberty, the erosion of our privacy that had been going on under the, on under the government. I had been unable, really, to get the public at large to focus for long enough on the issues to make them think seriously about them. And frankly, at the end of the day, I, I came to the conclusion that once we'd lost 42 days, which seemed to me a very, very serious loss of liberty and the loss of habeas corpus, uh, then it was time that somebody took a stand and drew people's attention. The result, frankly, is better than I could have expected. Uh, out of it, uh, before that, Roughly 80% of people were in favour of ID cards, now it's nearly 80% against. 70% of people supported 42 days, now 70% oppose. The government's dropped 42 days, it's put back ID cards, it's retreated on the communications database, the database of all our telephone calls, texts and emails, uh, and it's even backing off on some of its other uh, rather more uh, sinister database policies. So across the board it was worth doing at that time and it was probably the right time to do it. And, and where are you going now? Where, where is your, what is your position now? What, what do you think um, next steps are going to be politically with the Conservative Party? Well, with the Conservative Party, you, you have to ask them. I mean, I, I, I plough my own furrow, I'm afraid. Um, but the, in terms of issues coming up, I mean, it's very hard to tell. If you had said to me in December, uh, you're going to be talking about torture in February, I would have said, I don't think so, but that's what happened because of the Binya Mohammed case. Um, uh, each of these things have often been driven by what's happened in the news, which in turn has come about as a result of some misbehaviour by government. So that will dictate part of it. But what I can tell you is that we've got a huge battle on our hands to preserve British freedom and privacy, but it'll be a battle of fought in skirmishes, uh, each one important, each one vital to win, each one a battle between principle and expediency, uh, but which in the longer run will make a big decision about where our country is going. In terms of preserving liberties, what do you think of the role of the journalist in, in all this? Well, it's vital. Um, uh, I think Thomas Jefferson once said, if I had to choose between a free press and a democracy, I'd choose a free press, uh, even though he was frequently pilloried by said free press, and I'm no doubt in the same position. Uh, so journalism is vital. And indeed, one of the things we have succeeded at in the last year is making the entire press, or encouraging the entire press, to be interested in this uh, and take it seriously. And do you think that the journalist role is now becoming more difficult to, to fulfil, to, to fulfil the role of the fourth estate? Um, uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, there have been issues argued today about, about libel law, for example. I wasn't actually in that session, but, but it's an important issue. We can't have a country becoming a sort of libel tourism area, which is what it seems to be. But uh, it, I, know, I don't think it becomes more difficult. I mean, indeed, in some senses, we've had some successes there with the Sally Murrah case. That's the, that's the lady journalist who was arrested, charged, and then the charge, uh, and, uh, and prosecuted um, uh, for receiving information which exposed something the state had been doing which it shouldn't have been doing, and that was thrown out by the court under, I think, Article 4. So, you know, uh, I don't think they're, 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 it's getting any more difficult than it always has been. Journalists have always had a difficult line to tread on these matters, uh, but they've always done it pretty effectively. But what about the issue of, um, you know, decreasing numbers of jobs in journalism? I mean, many journalists are very worried about this right now, you know. The, well, I can, it, I can understand. Being able to report. Yeah, I can understand that. But you've got two trends going on. On the one hand, you've got the, the, the problem of, uh, uh, of the recession. But on the other hand, you know, you've got ever-increasing numbers of different channels. So for a while, you had a huge increase in the number of uh, jobs available. I think the point is, so long as they can uh, put the point, uh, put their critical points, then they will always do their job properly. Say next steps. Next steps. Where will we go from here to roll back some of these rights grabs? Well, I mean, my, my call to my own party is very simple. Abolish ID cards, reduce 28 days, and focus in all your policies on improving the relationship between citizen and state in the interest of the citizen. And realistically, how long will it take to roll back those, um, some of the more uh, extreme rights grabs? I'm almost maoist about it. It's a never-ending battle. David Davis, thank you. Thank you.